Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be taking us through the various stories that have been captured in the neck examinations uh, in the anthology, the memories we lost and other stories. So having discussed all the 14 stories, in the anthology a silent song and other stories i would want to embark on a series of stories in this anthology memories we lost and other stories first of all allow me to take you through some of the stories that have been examined in kcc neck examinations and uh, this anthology, Memories We Lost and Other Stories, was first examined in the year 2018. And in 2018, the story of reference was Barry McKinley's short story, Almost Home. And the question was that the candidates were expected to write a composition on the topic. Some people keep making one bad decision after another. In 2019, the story that was examined was the president by Maria Tukamara. And the question, the candidates were expected to write a composition on the evils of war using illustrations from the story the president 2020 the story examined was no violet bulawayos hitting budapest and candidates were expected to write an essay to illustrate the truth of the statement that children growing up in urban slums today face many challenges in 2021 and that is just last year, the story that was tested on was Leslie Neka Arima's story, Light. And the question was that the candidates were expected to write an essay to support the statement that distance between parents and their children can be an obstacle to effective parenting. So fast forward to this year, I'll be going through the remaining 10 stories in this anthology and at the end of the discussion I'll try to give my prediction of the story that could be set in this year's KCC. Uh, before that viewers, before we continue, Allow me to thank you all for supporting this channel. Again, allow me to ask those who are visiting for the first time to kindly hit onto that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that anytime we produce a video, YouTube will automatically notify you. Our first story of discussion will be Memories We Lost. The story the anthology's Memories We Lost and Other Stories, compiled by Chris Wanjala. And quite interestingly, the first story in this anthology is the story Memories We Lost. That is the story that I will take us through. And I will try to look at the various points of interpretation. And these points of interpretation will help the candidates to come up with the uh, essays. In most cases, you will realize that the various points of interpretation can form the framing of the questions that will be tested in KCC. So the first story here is from South Africa, written by one Lidudu Malingani Mkomboti and 
this story, many of us will uh, realize striking similarities between these story memories we lost and the story December by Philemon Liambo in the anthology A Silent Song and other stories. And what it brings to the fore is the mental illness, the manners of the mental illness, the effects it has on the victims as well as those related or the loved ones of the victims. So this story, the narrator's sister has been uh, uh, infected or maybe is suffering from a mental illness and uh, the community members, the villagers, or the family members do not really know what this condition or this disease is and they have decided to call it the thing. There are some of the effects of uh, this thing, this condition on the narrator, the narrator's sister who is the victim, the narrator's mother, and at the same time, the villagers. So the first effect that it has on the narrator's sister is that it is accompanied by loss of memory and speech. So in page 10 of this anthology, it is stated, the first thing that this thing, quote unquote, took away from her, from us, that is the narrator including herself, was speech. She began speaking in a language that was unfamiliar, her words trembling, as if trying to relay and think about revelations from the gods. So there is quite loss of memory. And uh, that is why when the narrator goes to school, she, they are taught by their teacher about a disease, schizophrenia, and she tries to place it that the condition that the sister is in could be schizophrenia. Uh, because schizophrenia, as we know, is a mental illness that makes the victim not really to decipher the emotions, the behavior, the surrounding, and is then unable to realize the reality or withdraws from maybe relationships. So that is the first thing that this thing or this mental illness has on the victim. Again, there is the physical injury in that the narrator's sister had banged her head against the wall when the thing struck. She smashed her head and left blood on the wall. So there is the physical injury that this thing has inflicted on uh, the narrator. Just still talking about the physical injury, uh, the narrator herself also suffers the physical injury when at one time when the thing struck, uh, the narrator's sister threw hot porridge on the narrator herself and uh, she couldn't even tell the, the sister when she finally regained her conscious, consciousness that she was the one who was responsible. Then, uh, apart from the physical injury that is inflicted on the narrator and her sister, there is again the disturbance of the villagers' sleep. Whenever this thing uh, 
struck the narrator used to start screaming and ran away from home beginning by waking their mother up the narrator and then abducting the entire village from their sleep there is some, there are some telling and uh, quite subtle statements that the narrator makes that shows that uh, the villagers could uh, could feel disturbed about this whole affair and it is quite interesting that even when they broke into groups to form such parties to search for uh, the narrator's sister who is the victim they came back empty handed the narrator's mother arrived the next day with uh, the girl uh, holding uh, the victim and that and to some extent it shows that the villagers did not quite care whether they found the victim the schizophrenic uh, girl or not and uh, the statement is on page 11 where the narrator says they were worried about not finding my sister or annoyed at being woken in the middle of the night i could not tell so she is quite suspicious that uh, these villagers could feel disturbed and the reason that uh, the reason could be justified when the mother the next day arrived with the mentally ill girl yet they came back the same night empty handed again there is also the trauma the trauma that comes with uh, this thing and uh, when uh, the narrator's sister cracked the wall after the thing had attacked the narrator mentions that the blood stain remained visible on the wall long after my mother scrubbed it off long after she had applied three layers of mud and new water paint the stain stayed long after the sangoma came and cleansed the spot where my sister had bludgeoned her head i began to smell the blood stain in my dreams in my clothes in everything the smell of blood lingered after many sunsets had come even after the rain had come so that shows uh something about the trauma uh, she is left mentally disturbed about the banging of her sister's head she will know no peace so long as this thing is still uh attacking the sister then uh, another effect of this thing is that in an attempt to cure the victim of this mental illness the uh, narrator's mother has quite uh, she has she, she has quite come to to develop or uh, adopt quite desperate uh, measures to bring the cure she has gone to many church pastors she has gone to the sangomas and the sangoma is a, a traditional healer mostly in southern africa she has visited almost any sangoma who can be found around and uh, this quite looks like a, an effort in futility it quite does not bear any fruits because there was even this time that uh, the sangomas uh, ordered her that is uh, the narrator's mother to bring tobacco meat and matches that had been put 
in the rendezvous for the ancestors to take at night. And in one of the many rituals, they were not there by morning, leading them to believe that the ancestors had healed her. It was not long after this thing came again, proving that the tobacco, meat, and matches had simply been stolen by the thieves. So uh, it is quite interesting that the victim does not quite uh, beca uh, respond to the treatments by the Sangomas and the various church pastors. And that highlights the futility of most people seeking for answers uh, in, the very, uh, in uh, various witches, wizards, traditional healers. But all in all, this stands out as a mere charade and something that does not bear uh, fruits. Then again, we have uh, the other bit or the other point of interpretation of this story. We could be talking about uh, the care, the care that has been given to the victim amidst the suffering or amidst the attack by this ma mental illness. And number one, when uh, the victim becomes truant from school and she quite absents herself from school, the sister makes a sacrifice by also dropping out of school to take care of the mentally ill sister. Apart from that, there is also this initiative by the mother, by the villagers, to look for her when she gets uh, lost and the mother finally finds her. Then again the narrator's sister at some point take uh, the narrator outside in the rain and they play as the rain rains and all this she's doing so that the sister can recover some of her memories. It is kind of a therapy. Then uh, lastly, when uh, the narrator's mother, with the help of uh, the narrator's uncle called Smellyfoot, conspire to take uh, the victim to Nkunzi. And Nkunzi here is uh, also a Sangoma, is from a remote village in which houses were lined miles apart from one another. He was famous for baking, quote-unquote, people and claiming to cure them. Uh, the narrator overhears the mother and smelly foot discussing that they are going to take uh, the narrator's sister to Nkunzi. Uh, she had heard of how Nkunzi baked people. He would make a fire from cow dung and wood, and once the fire burned red, he would tie the demon-possessed person onto a section of zinc roofing, then place it on the fire. He claimed to be baking the demons, and the other person would recover from the burns a week later. The narrator had not heard of anyone who had died, but she had not heard of anyone who had lived either. So she also protects the sister from undergoing this kind of barbaric uh, traditional ritual and in that saves her and takes her to the hospital where finally they find hope that probably she will find assistance at the end. So there are these three points of interpretation that 
a candidate should look out for in trying to analyze this story. And the first one is the effect of this thing on the victim, the narrator, the narrator's mother, and the, vi the villagers. Then the second one, uh, the futility of the kind of uh, traditional rituals that are exercised in an attempt to save the victim from the mental illness. Then lastly, number three, the understanding and the care that the family members of the victim by mental illness uh, bring to the table to finally bring optimism and hope back to the mentally ill person. So we will stop there. The next time we meet, we will be looking at another story.